So as always, start by scanning your body, either from the crown of your head all the way to the soles of your feet or the other way around. And take your time. Observe what is happening in this very moment. Notice how the breath moves your body a little bit. Notice where you feel your breathing most. Maybe it's your stomach, your chest. your upper lip. Notice that with every inhale, your spine can lengthen a little bit without you trying to do anything. It just happens on its own. And observe how each exhale grounds you a little bit more. If you choose to use ujjayi breathing, the oceanic breath, during your practice today, you can come into it now. It can be as loud or as quiet as you want, as long as you can hear it. Take your hands into a prayer in front of your heart. And if you'd like to set an intention or make a dedication, now is a good time to do it. And let's begin with one ohm together. Inhale. Oh 
slowly release your hands. And as always, start with whatever movement you wish. Remembering that today you have a ridiculous head on your head. So be extra slow, extra careful, and extra mindful. So that actually works out very well. You can do circles, you can round and flex your spine. You can turn your head from side to side, whatever it is you feel. And when you are ready, come to center. Change the cross of your legs. So if your right leg was on top now, take it on the bottom. Grow your spine toes. Drop your shoulders. And take your shoulders all the way up to your ears. Relax your hands. And take your head a little bit back. And maybe from side to side, if it feels okay. And release. Inhale, take your shoulders all the way to your ears. Hold for a moment. And exhale. Inhale. Inhale. <sighs> Drop your head towards your chest and very, very slowly take your chin from one shoulder to the other. Slowly come back to center and take the soles of your feet together. We're going to do a forward fold so you can use blocks for your head. You can use bolsters, blankets, whatever you wish. Or you can do it without any props. Remember that in yin practice, you want to soften your muscles, soften your body as much as possible. And of course, if the pose becomes uncomfortable, you're very welcome to get out of it.
Notice how your body softens into the pose, little by little, without you trying anything, without you pushing, just allowing. Appreciate the allowing. If your body wants to go deeper into the pose, go ahead, allow it to happen, but remember to soften the muscles. very slowly start coming out of the pose. You can take the soles of your feet on the floor and maybe do windshield wipers with your legs. Or maybe you want to Lie down onto your back and hug your knees into your chest, whatever feels good to you. And slowly come out. And um, we'll do a squat pose. So if if this is too challenging to just sit like this, you can um, do it this way. You can sit on a bolster or on a couple of bolsters. Do you want another one? Um, uh, it's, it would be better, but uh, it's okay if not. Oh, yeah, that's perfect. Try to have your elbows into your knees instead of your upper arms so that your torso can be tall. Yeah, very nice. Beautiful. Perfect. And then maybe you can even kind of wiggle from side to side. And if you can sit without a block or a bolster, go ahead and do that. Maybe close your eyes. And just connect with the soul. Connect with your breath. And see if you can soften into the soul. Allow your body to open up very slowly on its own without you pushing, without you forcing, without you trying to make anything happen. And slowly come out of it. Take your legs forward. Maybe do a little massage for your legs. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> yes. And now open your legs up just a little bit, not too much. And we're going to do another forward fold, but remember since it's yin practice, to try not to reach forward with your muscles, but rather allow the forward fold to happen on its own just with your body. So no reaching. You can use a bolster for your head or block. Try to have your legs relaxed. Maybe even put your hands under your knees to make sure that they are a little bit bent. Maybe take your head from side to side if it feels good. Relax your shoulders. Even when you are already in the pose for a couple of minutes, periodically check with yourself if you are really relaxed. Run a little quick scan over your body to make sure that it's softening as much as it is possible. And very slowly start coming out. Take your forearms onto the floor, bend your legs, and allow yourself to sink into your shoulders so that your lower back touches the floor, your entire spine round. It should feel very good on the lower back. If you want to, you can tuck your chin into your chest, or if it feels good, you can drop your head back, or you can take it from side to side. And lie down all the way onto your back. Hug your knees into your chest. Maybe rock and roll back. Oh no, sorry. From side to side. Maybe do a happy baby pose.
and then take your strap and straighten your left leg forward, bend your right knee in and take the strap around the transversal arch of your foot. Grab the strap very low so that your elbows and your upper back are relaxed on the floor. And then slowly start straightening up your right leg as much as it is available to you. It does not have to be all the way straight. And slowly and carefully pulling it towards your face. Find this balance between stretching your legs and your muscles being relaxed. Connect with your breath and notice how Every inhale and every exhale actually can help you in this process of stretching. With each exhale, you can allow your legs to come a little bit closer to your torso. With each inhale, maybe you can straighten it a little bit more. Take your strap into your right hand and slowly start opening your leg to the right side. Try to keep your left hip on the floor. And as you open your leg to the side, also pull it towards your uh, head. And once again, try to find this balance between stretching and relaxing. Because remember, in, in the yin practice, you want to work with the connective tissue, with fascia. And that can only happen if the muscles are completely relaxed. And slowly take your leg back to center and then grab your strap with your left hand and start crossing the leg over to the other side. Here you can play with both variations. You can keep your left, uh, your right hip on the floor or you can take it all the way off the floor, whatever feels better for you today. And remember as you cross the leg over, also pull it slowly and carefully towards your face. And slowly come back to center, grab your strap with both hands and start walking your hands up towards your foot and taking your torso up as if you wanted to touch your forehead to your knee. Maybe it happens, maybe it doesn't happen, it doesn't matter. Try to keep your left leg on the floor and relax. And slowly release your back down. 
maybe hug your knee in, and if you want to, you can roll your ankle out, you can flex and point your toes, you can roll your hip out, or do whatever you want in this transition. And slowly release your leg forward. Notice the difference between the two. And hug the other leg in. Take the strap around the arch of your foot. Try to keep your mind present in this moment. It helps to focus on your breath, or maybe focus on the sounds around you, starting with the sounds close to you, like your own breathing, my voice, the sound of fans, and then expanding it to include the garden, the street, maybe even the ocean. Grab your strap in your left hand and start opening your leg out to the side and at the same time pull it towards your face. And remember, since we're doing it very, very slowly, there is no rush whatsoever. Allow the stretch to happen on its own. Don't push anything. Simply allow. Try to keep the opposite hip on the floor, but don't worry too much about it today. If it comes off the floor, it's not a problem. And slowly come back to center. Grab the strap with the other hand and start crossing it over. And as you cross it over, also pull it towards your face. Connect with the movement. Another good way to keep your mind present is to be really curious about every single detail of what you're doing. So maybe in each pose you can Scan your body once again as you are staying in the pose or as you are stretching or moving and just see what is happening. And not only physically but also emotionally and mentally what kind of thoughts each pose provokes. Slowly come back to center. Grab your strap with both hands and start walking yourself up. And if you feel that you can touch your foot, and then you can you can do that instead of doing it with a strap. And slowly release. Bend your knee in. And maybe roll your ankle out. Maybe point and flex your toes. And whenever you're ready, take both legs forward. And once again, notice both legs. Hopefully they are even. And one more time, bend your legs into your your chest. And this time, maybe you want to rock and roll back and forth, eventually coming back 
to a comfortable seat at the top of your mat. Laura, we are the only one holding up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so um, we're going to do a child's pose. I suggest a supported version of the child's pose. So you can either have um, the bolster for your stomach, for your like this to lie down like this, or you can have a bolster between your heels and your sit bones, or you can have two bolsters, and if you need another one, I will be happy to bring it to you, or you can have a bolster in, 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 in the front and roll a blanket between your heels and the sit bones. So if you want any of, of additional props, please raise your hand. And don't be shy. And if using bolsters is not comfortable, of course, adjust however you need to adjust. The main point of this practice is to be very relaxed. Your arms can go forward, your arms can go by your side, or however you want. Maybe you uh, press your hands together into a prayer and put them on top of your neck, or maybe you put your palms flat on your shoulders or on your neck and even give a little massage to the upper back. Run your skin first. Make sure that every muscle in your body is softening, letting go. And then start focusing on your breath or on the sounds around you. Or if you'd like, you can use a loving kindness mantra for today's practice. I will remind you how it goes, but also remember that you can use whatever words speak to you most, so you can create your own verses. The traditional wording is May I be filled with loving kindness. May I be well in body and mind. May I be happy, healthy, and free. May I be filled with loving kindness. May I be well in body and mind. May I be happy, healthy, and free. If you feel that your body is starting to open up, 
and wants to go a little bit deeper into the pose, it's up to you. You can choose to do that or you can choose to stay in a milder version. Very, very slowly and carefully start coming out of the pose, taking yourself onto all fours. And first, take your hips from side to side to relax your lower back. Maybe take your head to side, from side to side. And then if you'd like to, you can do cat-cow movement, inhaling your heart forward and exhaling, rounding your back. You can do any other movements that you wish. Maybe circling the body, maybe going to child's pose and then back to all fours, whatever it is that feels good to you. Remember, nobody knows your body better than you. If you only connect with it, it will tell you everything that you need to know. And when you've had enough movement, lie down onto your stomach. Open up your legs to the corners of your mat. Rock your hips from side to side to release your lower back. And take yourself into sphinx pose with your arms. And then check your lower back. If you feel the, a little pinch in your lower back, that means you want to engage your abs and maybe rock your hips a little bit more to release. You can stay here or you can take it a little bit lower with your arms like this. You can also take it deeper, straightening your arms. Whatever version you are doing, focus on your heart and allow it to soften.
So this is a very challenging pose in the yin practice because on one hand, of course, you need to use your arms to sustain yourself in the pose, but on the other hand, you want to relax the muscles of your body. It's a pretty interesting balance that you can achieve. Slowly, one more time, lower down onto the floor. And this time, take your arms in cactus shape. Turn your head to your right and draw your right knee to the side. Maybe rock your hips a little bit from side to side just to accommodate your lower back in the best way possible. If you find that your mind is wandering off, just bring it back. Bring it back to whatever practice you're doing whether it is keeping your focus on your breath or the sound or the loving kindness mantra. And in fact, if you want to take the loving kindness meditation to the next step, instead of doing it towards yourself, you can pick another person that maybe needs a little bit more of your attention or in general a little more loving at this moment and direct the loving kindness mantra towards them. May they be filled with loving kindness. May they be well in body and mind. May they be happy, healthy, and free. Bring your legs back to center and open up your arms to the both sides. Keep your head turned to the right. Bend your right arm and take your right hand close to your head and then start rolling over your left shoulder to open up the shoulder of your head. Unless you have the ridiculous hat on, you can be on the floor. If you have the hat on, then you can put it on a block. We have modifications for everything, Nalda. You cannot get us. <laughs> and if you'd like to, you can bend your right leg and put your right foot in front of your left leg. That will make the pose a little bit milder. You can keep your legs together or for the deepest version, you can take your right leg behind your left and kind of use it as a lever to open up. Open up your arm. Okay, so lay down on the floor completely with your stomach on the floor. Oh. Mm -hmm. Open up your Okay, turn your head to your right. Put it on a block, maybe. Mm -hmm. And then bend it and put your hand like this. And to use it as a lever. Uh -huh. And then, yeah, good. And then take, bend it and put your foot on the floor. Go like okay. this. Uh -huh. So either like this or behind. Or your legs together. Do you feel it in the shoulder? Mm -hmm. Yes. So you can kind of push yourself off. But be careful not to overdo it. Slowly come back to center and take it to the other side. Remember, this could be a pretty 
deep stretch for the shoulder and it may feel very good but be careful make sure you don't overdo it Slowly come back to center. Once again, put your arm in cactus shape and turn your head to your left. And this time, draw your left knee in. And here, really focus on your upper back. Accommodate your arms in such a way that you really feel the release in your upper back and your shoulder blades. You can kind of wiggle them around to find this perfect spot. And soften. And slowly come to center. Take yourself onto all fours and then come to a comfortable seat. Open up your legs. And as usual, if you want to, if you feel the strain in your lower back, it means that you could be better off if you sit up a little bit on a blanket or a block or a bolster. You okay, Laura? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> take your right foot into your left thigh. Maybe grab a block. And we're going to twist to the left. So maybe you can use a block for your left hand. Maybe you don't need it. I prefer to have it, but... It's just me. But before you really settle into the pose, check that you can sustain your twist without the use of your left hand to make sure that you're not leaning back onto your left hand. Relax your legs. Relax your hips. Relax your shoulders. and focus on the back of your heart. Allow it to open up. And if your head is not comfortable turning all the way to your left, you can keep it forward, you can even turn it to the right, whatever makes you feel best. Check in with your face. Make sure you're not tensing your jaw. The skin around your eyes is relaxed. And very slowly and carefully come back to center. And here um, I'll give you two choices for the pigeon pose. So you can either swing your back leg into a regular pigeon on the floor. You can use 
a bolster here for your torso, or you can do your pigeon on your back, taking your right ankle over your left thigh, and bringing your left leg in. Whichever version feels more comfortable. If you want to, you can even go to the wall to put your left foot on, on the wall so that you don't have to hang it in the air for a long time. As usual in yin practice, first check in with your body, make sure that you are softening and relaxing, and then focus on your breath, on the sounds around you, or on your mantra. And if you would like to take your loving kindness meditation to the next step, you can direct it towards somebody difficult in your life. somebody who you don't necessarily see eye to eye with and see if you can wish them to be filled with loving kindness. It may seem unnatural and forced at first, but if you soften into this, it will become easier and easier. And interestingly, it does open up your heart and soften it to include this person into your thoughts, into your heart, into your life maybe in a little less challenging way. Of course, with time, probably not after once. So if you choose to do this, direct the same verses to them. May they be filled with loving kindness. May they be well in body and mind. May they be happy, healthy, and free. Slowly start coming out of the pose, and you can stretch back into a child's pose or into downward facing dog. And take your time. Do whatever you need to do to transition, and then eventually come back to a comfortable seat at the top of your mat. Take your left foot into your right thigh, and this time we'll twist to the right. Again, you can choose to use a block or a blanket under your sit bone, or a block for your right hand maybe. And first check that you're not leaning back into your right hand. 
this is another challenging pose for the yin practice because you want to be very tall and alert with your spine, but at the same time completely relaxed. It's tough to find this balance. Maybe on this side you can focus on your breath. Flowing, or imagine it flowing from the very base of your spine along your spine, all the way to the crown of your head and feel how it makes you a little bit taller without doing anything special, without forcing it. Very slowly and carefully start coming out of the pose and take your pigeon on the side, whichever variation you want, on your back, with props, without props, next to a wall. Soften through your body, through your heart, through your thoughts. Very slowly start coming out once again. You can stretch into child's pose, into downward facing dog, all fours, whatever feels good to you. Come back to a comfortable seat whenever you feel ready for it.
take your feet flat on the floor, and then you can either hug your thighs like this. The point is to um, kind of round your back with a little bit of resistance. So you're going to be hugging strongly on your thighs and at the same time pulling your spine back. Or you can grab under your knees with your hands and allow yourself to hang on your arms. Tuck your chin into your chest. Make sure that the back of your neck is also relaxing, releasing, stretching a little bit. And then slowly come forward. And we will take a very nice long shavasana. And you can um, do whatever you want in shavasana. Maybe use props. If, you, um, if your neck is not feeling very well, uh, you can do it at the rope wall. You can do an inversion on the ropes if you want to. So whatever, whatever you choose. And as you settle into your shavasana, I would like to read a poem to you. It's actually a prayer written by Antoine de Saint-Exupéry, who wrote The Little Prince. And it's a beautiful one. I am not asking for miracles and visions, but for strength for everyday life. Make me attentive and curious so that I notice the beauty of each tree. Teach me to divide my time properly between the important and the secondary and show me how to distinguish between the two. Help me realize that dreams about the past and the future are just that, dreams. And teach me to be here and now, accepting this moment as the only reality. Protect me from the naive belief that everything in life should be smooth. Give me a clear consciousness that the complexity of defeat, the fall and failure, are just a natural part of life through which we grow and mature. Remind me that the heart often argues with the reason. I know that many problems can be solved just by doing nothing. So teach me patience. Give me true friends and show me how to tend to friendship as if it were a delicate flower. Make me somebody who knows how to take care of those in need. Protect me from my fear to miss something in life. Grant me not what I want, but what I really need. Teach me the art of small steps. Thank you.